All right, so I'm gonna put a little wet rag, especially on the filter dryer. Now these, this filter dryer has nice long stubs, which should make this pretty easy. On the TXV, we need to protect it. And in this case, it's easier just to stick a wet rag in here to protect, you know, to keep from heat, to keep the heat from conducting down the liquid line and into the expansion valve. So that's a key protection point. We have currently nitrogen flowing at two to five SCFH, that's cubic feet per hour, which is a tiny, tiny amount, not SCFM. Um, we're also going to protect, when we do finish up this suction line, we're going to take the wet rag and put it here to protect the bulb. Actually, I think it's already kind of on there, but we'll make sure that that's protected as well so that we don't get the bulb overheated. But I am going to take a little bit of wet rag, not a wet rag, but wet rag from Refrigeration Technologies. I'm just going to pack it around there to make sure that we don't scorch the paint and that we don't conduct too much heat on the inside of that filter dryer. It is reusable. Now one key thing is whenever you're using wet rag or really anything like this is you do not want to get it on the joint that you're working on because then that's going to make it difficult. But you want to protect whatever you're trying to protect by putting it on there nice and thick. Wearing the safety glasses, I'm using the solder weld 15% silver rod. There we go, just a little bit of a feather. Start on the male side. Start getting it to that dark cherry red. Back off just a little bit. 15% flows like butter. When you get done, you can make a nice little shoulder on it, but the main thing is to draw it into the joint. So you want to get that entire joint to that deep cherry red. Same thing here. You want to always work away from anything you're going to burn. Start on the male side, so that way you're conducting the heat into the joint, and then you work the solder into the female side. It starts getting too warm, you just back it off a little bit. And you always inspect with an inspection mirror. Now here, before I do this, I'm gonna protect just the face of the unit a little bit, just to make sure that I don't get any damage here. I don't want to, I want to make sure I don't get it on the joint itself. But I'm mostly just using it to protect the paint because I've got the, I've already got the rag on the inside protecting the TXV. This is just me being a little over protective, but I don't like burning paint. Especially since I'm not in as much practice with brazing. Just a little bit of that secondary feather is what you're looking for. Just a touch. Make sure you get it all the way around and pull it in real nice. One nice thing about wet rag is that it is reusable. Use the back of this rod here just to kind of pick this stuff off, put it back in. Just get it off the area. Some of the little black flecks you can pick off later. You'll notice that I don't go to cool everything immediately. Just give it a chance to set up before I cool it, and after that, then you're okay to cool it. Especially when it's near a valve that you want to make sure you're protecting. There's some value in getting it cool a little sooner than later. Here's the joint. We got a nice shoulder on it, but we also have that color change going into the cup. If anything, I might have gotten a little bit more heat a little deeper, but it's a nice joint all the way around. When talking to techs about brazing and soldering, there's a couple things that I'm constantly harping on. One of them is keeping the system clean, dry, and tight, flowing nitrogen while brazing, and also pulling a really good vacuum. But right along with that is keeping valves, compressors, dryers from overheating. And that's both because you can damage the internal components, especially with things like service valves, reversing valves, TXVs, electronic expansion valves, those sorts of things. 
but also because if you burn the paint, compromise the paint on something like a compressor or a line dryer, that can lead to rust and corrosion, which is why we use wet rag heat blocking putty from Refrigeration Technologies. Wet rag is great to use uh, packing it around line dryers, around the stubs on compressors, and then also if you're working in tight areas with expansion valves, because sometimes sometimes you don't have a lot of area to work, so you use the, the heat blocking putty in places that it may be tough to get a rag, or sometimes when you use a rag, there's a lot of evaporation that comes off and that can interfere with the brazing. This is reusable, so when you get done with it, you can just scrape it back into the canister. Sometimes there may be a little some little black flecks that you may have burned when you did the brazing, and you can just kind of pick those out. But then you just scrape it back in here, and you can continue to reuse it. If it dries out a little bit, you can just put a, just a few drips of water in it, and then that will rejuvenate it. We use it all the time for a lot of different applications. And recently we were doing a change out, and I stopped by a job and showed how to use it on a line dryer. Hey, big thanks to Refrigeration Technologies. They've been a longtime sponsor of the podcast and everything we do at HVAC School. They really make great products. Uh, they're a U.S. company here in California. The Pastorellos are just great salt of the earth people. So give Wet Rag from Refrigeration Technologies a try. And while you're at it, try out some of their other great products, such as the Pan and Drain Spray, Viper HD Cleaner, and the Viper Aerosol Cans uh, for cleaning coils of all types. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.